Hi everyone, I am Selva. So today we are going to understand the robust regression algorithm very clearly. We are going to understand the inherent or in-depth mathematics behind it step by step. Now, robust regression is an extremely powerful, very powerful regression modeling algorithm that you can use in place of linear regression at any point in time. All right. So whenever you are in a position to use linear regression, instead of linear, linear regression, consider using robust regression in its place. Specifically, robust regression with Huber loss. Now, what is this all about? So let's understand all of this with a clear example. So here you have a X variable and you have a Y variable. Just two variables. Let's consider, let's make it simple, just two variables. Now, the data points are like this. And if you try to draw a linear regression, it will come up with a line of best fit that might look something like this. Right? Now, what happens if you introduced just one single outlier? This outlier data point is quite different from the rest of the data points here, isn't it? So just one single outlier if you introduce, this line, this line will tend to tilt towards the other outlier data point. Why is this so? Because in linear regression, we are using something called the mean squared error. Error is nothing but the residual. So what it tries to do is it tries to minimize the squared errors. That is the distance between this point and the line of best fit. This point and the line of best fit, so on and so forth. All these distances, it tries to minimize overall. Right? It squares this distance, not just the, not just this distance, it squares these distances and tries to minimize the mean sum of squares. Now imagine if you introduce just one single error here, one single outlier data point here. Now this outlier data point, let's say this is, this is at a distance of 10 units. Let's imagine this is at a distance of 10 units. All right. And let's also consider all these distances is of one unit, one unit. Now, just because one single outlier is present and it, it, and it introduces 10 units of error, you need to have 100, 100 one unit error data points, one unit error data points in order to compensate for this one single error. Compensate means this, in order for this line to not tilt towards the, uh, towards the outlier, you need to have 100 individual one unit error data points. That is, like these points, like the regular points we have here, we need to have 100 such points overall because we are using squared errors. So you have, you compute the error, you have 10 units of error, right? You square it. That's what the mean squared loss is all about. Is it? We square it, that becomes 100, right? 100 one unit errors. What if your outlier is at a distance of 20 units? Right, 20 units, if, if your outlier is at a distance of 20 units, what happens? In that case, you would need 20 square, 20 square, which is 400, 400 one unit error data points, one unit error data points in order for this line to not move. Understand the complexity. What if you have just one more error with 20 units of error, one more data point with 20 units of error, you will need 20 square into two. So 800 one unit errors you will need to compensate for this, this two outliers which is prob problematic. We don't want to be in this situation. So how to tackle this? Instead of mean squared error, like we use in linear regression, we are going to use something called the Huber loss, which is the case of robust regression. So how does Huber loss work? The formula for Huber loss is in two parts. So we have a threshold value. We call this as sigma. We have a threshold sigma, threshold sigma. Now the error, if it is lesser than sigma, we take the usual squared error formula, half of squared errors. We'll call yi minus y hat as the error term. So this becomes 1 by 2 error, 1 by 2 ei, ei square. So 1 by 2 ei square if the error is lesser than a given threshold sigma. If it is greater than, if, it, if the error is greater than the threshold sigma, then we use another formula. So this is the part 1. If this is the range, if, if the error is lesser than this value, we use this formula. Otherwise, we use the below formula here, which is the threshold sigma, the threshold sigma multiplied by the error here. This is nothing but EI, the error minus half of sigma. So this formula becomes in a simpler format becomes like this, where EI is, EI is the absolute error YI minus YI hat, where YI hat is the predicted value. So this is the Huber loss, but how does this Huber loss solve the problem of ever increasing error that is making our line tilted towards the outlet data points. How does it solve it? 
let's understand that so imagine here consider this consider this orange line this particular line all right this is the line for squared error the x axis here is the error the x axis in this graph is the error and the y axis is the loss we have three lines here for three different loss imagine the loss is the loss for linear regression is mean squared error squared error right so as your error increases it increases and as the error increases it exponentially keeps on increasing we are squaring the error right it increases drastically the problem happens so beyond a certain value in the initial ranges of error it is fine all right as error increases the squared also loss also increases but beyond a certain value beyond a certain error these are the error values of outlier data points isn't it outliers are those data points where the error value is very large so for outlier data points the mean squared error value becomes very very large we don't want this situation so instead of doing this in huber loss beyond the cutoff cutoff so imagine this to be the cutoff up to this up to this cutoff it is behaving similar to mean squared error but beyond the cutoff it will take the new formula by applying this formula it continues to fall follow a rather a linear relationship with the error so your error does not exponentially keep on increasing that's what we want besides huber loss also gives us a hyperparameter the threshold here the value here is a hyperparameter hyperparameter which can be decided by the user whichever value of sigma gives you the best prediction that value of sigma you can go after so effectively by adjusting the loss function to huber loss like how we are we are having here by adjusting this we are denying the line of best fit to get tilted towards the outlier data point to an extreme case so that's a very simple and a brilliant approach to solve the problem of outliers now if you want to implement robust regression in scikit learn you can use the huber regressor this model you can use where it takes the epsilon as one of the parameters this is the threshold by default the value of the threshold is 1.35 this is up to the user to set now the scikit learn implementation also allows for regularization in addition to robust regression so this is in turn if you are using the alpha value this is kind of regularized 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 robust regression and in the bottom of the page there's a code sample of how you can implement robust regression just like all other scikit learn models import huber huber regression we are creating the data set we are creating the data set we are importing huber regression then we are also introducing when creating the data we are also introducing some amount of noise or outliers in the data we are also adding couple of random variables here all right now here then after doing this we are fitting the huber huber regressor model this does the training part you are getting the score of this then predict the values this part is very similar to all other regression models you would use in scikit learn so all this is fine likewise we are also fitting a linear regression model then comparing the coefficients of huber loss huber regression and linear regression so these are this is let me erase the remaining part this is the huber regression coefficients and this part here is the linear regression coefficients now compare both of this with the true coefficients the true coefficients from the data when we created these samples we are also storing the values of the coefficients all right that value is getting printed here this is the true value of the coefficients now compare the results of huber's coefficients versus linear regression models coefficients you can clearly see you can clearly see the huber regression is very closer to the actuals compared to what linear regression is providing so that's the beauty of robust robust regression whenever you are dealing with a regression modeling problem consider instead of applying linear regression consider applying the robust regression with huber loss or in scikit learn the huber regression model instead of the linear regression model